And we're back with some more oxygen not included on Oasis. Today it's the industrial brick. I'm going to get this finished. It's going to be a hot industrial brick. And uh, before we get started on that, there's a few pieces of accounting I have to take care of. The first is this mess of a polluted water tank. Um, yeah, it started overflowing and I threw in some plants to try and suck up the water, but I don't have enough reed fiber to actually absorb the ridiculous amount of water coming out of these two. This is not normal. I should not have this much water on this map. I've just been letting it overflow and I've been throwing in as many plants as I can that soak up polluted water. I don't have enough reed fibers, so I threw in a few arbor trees. I, I don't even want the wood. I already have more wood than I know what to do with. These, these forests, I had plans to maybe do some ethanol distilleries, but they seem, well, very space. They're going to take up a lot of space and they would require me to keep my base cool. Um, since I want to run a hot base, that doesn't really seem like a good idea. Heat-wise, it's creeping in around the edges, but we don't mind. I might actually get rid of all the insulated tiles around the edge at some point. That's a, that's more effort than it's worth, though. Instead, we'll concentrate on this. Hopefully the water will sort itself out in the interim. Now, uh, I'm going to need batteries in here. I'm going to need a battery bank. I'm just going to run this on a, a coal generator brick over here. This is just going to run on heavy watt wire. We'll make it a lead. We'll hook that up, and that will provide us our Kickstarter until we switch over to either petroleum or natural gas. I think I might try running natural gas this run because... Well, I haven't done that before. I'm more of a... I'm a worshipper of the goddess of black and gold that is oil. And normally I use oil quite extensively, but I have four natural gas geysers on this map, so I suppose I should use them, and I can run a hot power brick as well, so it'll sort of suit the theme. A hot hot base, hot industrial brick, hot power brick. Uh, at the moment I'm just uh, vacuuming this out, in here I've dumped in a bunch of water. Uh, I tried to get it pretty hot. I'm... Uh, desalinating this water so all I do is I run it through the metal refinery to get as close to boiling as I possibly can and dump it in here uh, the bottom layer is going to be batteries I don't have enough steel for the batteries so we'll make it reasonably cool water down here we'll just stick in one load of water that should be fine now I'll cut this forward a bit until I've got this vacuumed out and we've got a few more bits and bobs in place I also have to clear out uh, the vestigial piping this may look a bit odd right now but I will be putting steam turbines on top of this when the time comes for the time being, let's get this warmed up. Well, let's cover just one thing first. There's water down here, but there's also water, a layer of water up here. And uh, let's get liquids. It, you can't really see it on the overlay because of the way airflow tiles work. You, you can't visibly see the water sitting on top of the airflow tiles. I have no idea why, it's just a rendering issue. But if you look along here, you'll see there's plenty of water, exact same amount of water as there is down here. Well, roughly the exact same amount of water. I gave them the same amount of operations on both sides. There's also a bit of water down here, but it's cooler. Uh, I'm not going to be boiling the water down here just yet. We are going to boil all the water in here, because all the machinery in here can take it. Well, that gold transformer won't be able to take it. I'll have to rip that out and replace it with steel. But that will come. Now, radiant gas pipe, gold amalgam, what? Radiant liquid pipe made out of aluminum. Or is it? Here we go. I've queued up quite a bit of it. So this goes up here, around, and then right back down again. Same again done and one last one. Oh, I gotta get rid of that pipe right there and then we throw that up there and we're done now the reasoning behind all of this is this is all radiant piping so all of this radiant piping is going to dissipate heat in right into this water and into the water up there uh, I've tried a few different methods in a test map to try and get this working and this just seemed like the simplest way and I did get it working with a few issues that hopefully I think I theoretically have the answers to We'll find out. So all the water in here will boil, all the water up here will boil, we'll stick a couple of steam turbines on top to delete the heat, and we will have a hot industrial brick. Everything in here will just be a giant steam room, and all the heat from the kilns, all the heat from the metal refineries will all be soaked up. As well as that, we can put in rock granulators. Rock granulators, you make them out of steel, same thing, and I think I'm going to throw in a plastic press as well. Though that may require just a little bit of finagling to make sure that the plastic doesn't melt should be possible. Now this area down here, the battery box, I'm also going to add that in, just not yet. Uh, the reason being, uh, I don't want, there's going to be a lot of water to heat for the to get this up to operating temperature, and I want to make sure everything warms up. Even this crude oil is going to have to be heated, which reminds me, I should throw in a few temperature shift plates. I'm going to use diamond because while uh, the new aluminum ore is really good, uh, I can't really afford to be throwing that around the place just yet. Also, it's a limited resource. It's only available in your starting biome, and until we get to space, eh, not really a possibility. 
So once this is all hooked up, we'll hook up the power, and at that point we can just start throwing, well, start throwing resources through this. Uh, that can go there. Oh wait, yep, yeah, I'm going to need to get my hands on some petroleum, aren't I? To deal with the lack of petroleum I realized I had, I uh, just hooked this up to the old petroleum refinery I had up the top. I had to replace it with gold amalgam. I'd already salvaged this deal. And to fill it with crude oil, I did have some crude oil left down here at the bottom. So I'm going to pump all that crude oil from down here and dump it all the way up to the top into this device, which will then spit out the petroleum, which I will use to prime these machines. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have enough crude oil. I didn't do any calculations. I may have to activate this oil reservoir for a bit just to squeeze out enough oil to get them running. Oh, there's another one over there, actually. Hmm. Also discovered that there's a big blob of steam down here. That looks very, very toasty. And there is so much dirt in this area, I think it all got boiled. That used to be slime, it's now dirt. <laughs> Germ-wise, that is the most germ-free uh, biome I've seen in a while when it comes to slime. The only slime left alive is over here because it's uh, behind a bisolite. So it would appear there's a probably a volcano back there somewhere. Also, more boiling hot abyssalite over here. Or sorry, not abyssalite, obsidian. More boiling obsidian over here. This is going to make continuing that ladder system very int Oh. Ah, my ladder system is going to dissect right through that natural gas geyser. Yeah, I'm going to have to chicane around that. That's... Ah. It's times like these where you, you want to install the mod that allows you to delete those point of interest buildings. But no, we'll, we'll work around it. Anyway, uh, I'll just get some petroleum together so we can start this up, and then uh, I'll cut back in. And that's it. We're good to go. We've got a bunch of prime systems. So, time to turn this place into a into a sauna. So, we'll turn you up to... Yeah, we'll, we'll put out four on each of these. They'll operate, they'll heat up the, the water down here and up here, and this should hopefully start turning this place into steam. Uh, I might want to put in a couple of temperature shift plates for this crude oil over here. In testing, this caused issues. Now, I want to grab some dirt for that, because dirt is cheap. Now, uh, that will all be finished up. Once that's all done and all the systems are primed, I'll cut back in again so that we can see it in action. My fat fingers messed up on the recording, and you missed me making a beautiful mistake. I am. Um, I left in the, the exit points on this, and the coolant actually got sucked back out and sent back up here to the storage tank. I then had to reverse the flow and fill up all the tanks again. I'm kind of glad I lost that footage or, or didn't record it. it. It was just me making a, a stupid mistake. Uh, I finished the... I did get these four batches of iron finished, or four batches of steel finished. And we managed to drive up the temperature in here a little bit. But that's only a little bit. We want to turn this entire room to red hot. This is meant to be a hot room, so we're going to keep making things until it's hot. Uh, temperature of the water is up to 90 degrees down here. Up there it's up to about 84. We need a, to dump a lot more heat into this room. We also need to heat up this crude oil. This whole place needs to become much, much, much hotter. It is way too cool in here right now. Uh, I put in an auto sweeper made of, oh, made of lead, because I'm a Muppet. That's meant to be made of steel. I'm going to make that out of steel, and once we have an auto sweeper made of steel, that can sit there and it won't care about the temperature at all. Power-wise, I'm replacing that large transformer over there with steel, because that's going to be necessary to, ah, wrong button. That's going to be necessary to power the liquid, the thermium, thermo aqua tuner. I was supposed to say thermium aqua tuner. The thermo aqua tuner up there, which is going to provide cooling to the steam turbines. When we start using the steam turbines. As you can see, the steam starting to form now, but uh, it sort of forms and then immediately turns back into water. The reason being these airflow tiles, they don't heat up when they're in a vacuum. So the moment the steam happens, it interacts with the airflow tiles. The airflow tiles cool it down and it turns right back into water. But soon, those airflow tiles will have heated up past 100 degrees and then the steam will just stay steam. Until it touches the crude oil, which will soak up a bunch of the heat and then... It yeah, that's why I'm using these liquid locks here. I couldn't get away with using these. I was worried these would uh, cause them to break. So that's why I'm using the older, uglier liquid locks. Plus, I prefer these. They're rock solid. I've never had any problems with them. These, I'm just waiting for them to break at some point. Plan is, run this through here, and I'm going to run these four ceramics up the top. And I'm going to keep running this until it's going to get hot. So now this is looking more like a hot industrial brick. If you check the temperature overlay over 120 degrees just about everywhere even the crude oil in here has heated up this whole thing is a nice hot box of course that would be a problem if we kept this running so we're going to want to put down some steam turbines to soak up all that excess heat now steam turbines 
they have an overheat temperature of a thousand degrees. So if we make these out of lead, well, we, yeah, it doesn't really make a difference. We'll decrease its overheat temperature by 20 degrees. So its overheat temperature will be 980. Should probably point out though, it would melt first. It, it lead melts at about 300 and something degrees. So that would not be a good idea to get it that hot. I, I don't think we'll be getting anywhere near that. Um, well, we shouldn't be getting anywhere near that unless we make some horrible mistakes. I think I'll just use two steam turbines, so we'll place one... Well, I'm going to do all my steel here, my iron here, and all the low stuff like aluminum, copper, gold, all that kind of stuff will go through here. So since these will be the two hottest, I should probably place the steam turbines closer to them than I should to anywhere else. Say hey, one there, second one... Yeah, we'll put you about there in between the two. Yeah. And they're made out of lead, which makes them super cheap. The most expensive thing about them was the plastic that went into them. Uh, Power-wise, how was I going to do that? Ah, yes. Heavy conductive wire. We're going to grab some lead, and we're going to go up through here. Oh, great. Remind me to delete that wire in a second, or I'm going to get overloads. That will allow that... That will allow the power from the steam turbines to actually dump back into the grid and charge up our batteries down here, which I am going to have to replace all of these with steel. At some point the water down here is going to get hot enough to boil, and when it does, I want to have all ripped all these out and replaced them with steel. For the time being, I'm using gold, because it's got an overheat temperature of 125. Once we have them replaced with steel, the heat from these can be then dumped into this room, and they'll just become, well, they'll become power generators in their own right. Same as this power transformer over here, also made of steel. Now, is this a smart idea? No. No, it is not. This is incredibly expensive in steel. Uh, these are made of ceramic, which is fine. They don't overheat till 275. The kilns, you can make them out of anything. Kilns just don't have an overheat temperature. They only melt. So whatever it's made of, this will melt at 1,000 degrees. Until this hits 1,000 degrees, we're good. Same with the steam turbines now. Until they hit 327 degrees, we have no issues. To keep the steam turbines cool, though, we need to run some cooling through them. Uh, for that, that's why this, this thermo aquatuner is here. So, where did I put my plumbing? I'm going to get some radiant pipes. You know what, I think I'm going to use just aluminum because this stuff is so amazing. And I'm going to do something like this to run cooling through that area. And I, you know, let me have a quick think about how I wanted to finish this off. So my quick think turned into about 15 minutes of uh, fiddling around. Uh, what we have here is just a, a radiant pipe going all the way around. It comes all the way back, dumps into this tank, and then comes right back in here. Now this, uh, I'm just nicking this from Gearhead Gaming. He, uh, I saw this in one of his tutorials. It's it basically just comes in here, hops across. Well, the liquid tries to come through here. If this automation says, yeah, you keep the aqua tuner on, then the liquid will go in here, pop out the other side and keep going around the loop. If the aqua tuner switches off, it'll pop down here and bypass it. It just keeps the liquid moving constantly. It stops you ending up with hot, hot packets or hot pockets of water going through here. Occasionally where the thing will stop and then this end will end up warm, this end will still be cool so it won't keep running. Uh, we'll see it in action once it, it boots up, though I'll have to get some... Oh, I'm going to have to get some polluted water to throw in there. I could get some from the other side of my base, but there is a slime biome right there I could tap into. That would take only a little bit of effort. You know, it might actually... You know if I go in there, I'm going to strip mine it. Uh, I kind of want to get this running sooner rather than later, so I might just uh, get stuff from the other side of my base. Oh, I'm going to have to deconstruct this. I, of course, forgot to put in the automation wire, because it's me, and of course I did. So I'll have to break this open to get in there again. That shouldn't be an issue, though. Once this is all done, we can pl plug in the cooling loop. That will provide the cooling for the steam turbines, at which point we can start running these flat out for as long as we want. We don't have to care. You simply make whatever you like and it, the steam will just get sucked up by the turbines and be dealt with. Uh, I might want to heat this up though. I think I'll dump some heat down here to help these uh, get in on the action once I've got enough steel to replace them. Anyway, I'll skip this forward a bit until I've brought in some polluted water to prime this system in. So I managed to get my hands on a little bit of uh, polluted water. Uh, I got the polluted water by... well, I, I dismantled the slime biome. Now, you may think it was a bit excessive to go in there to get the slime biome for this, the polluted water when I have an entire tank over here of polluted water that I'm still struggling to deal with because there's way too much of it. However, in my defense, it was asking for it. it. It was totally looking, saying, yes, please dismantle me. So I did. I was just being a good neighbor. That was all. Now, this polluted water comes in here. It's going to pass through this uh, sensor. The sensor is, uh, sensor is detecting if it's above 30 degrees. Why is it detecting nothing right now? Hmm, one moment. So, yeah, that's a gas pipe thermosensor, not a liquid thermosensor. <laughs> So we're going to deconstruct that, but 
we can still take care of uh, this while we're at it. This is a buffer tank. Well, it's, an, it's for evening out the temperature. We want to get about a couple of hundred kilos of water in here. This will help even out the temperature as we go across. And to help with this, to make sure I don't overfill it, I've got this uh, shut off over here. So there we go. We got about 200 kilos. We will just uh, disable that there. Wait, wrong way. There we go. Now uh, this just flows around constantly. And we have a little, uh, little tank here that helps even out the temperature as time goes by. Now all I have to do is replace that uh, liquid pipe thermal sensor. And there we go. Cooling provided for our steam turbines so they will never overheat. Uh, the steam from, well, the heat from this uh, aqua tuner is dumped into the steam room, which then powers the steam turbines. Perfect, uh, in perfect relationship of power, well, cooling production to cool the steam turbines, and the heat from it is just dumped right back into them. It, it, it all works out quite nice, quite, uh, ah, quite nicely. Now, if we check here, ooh, how am I going to work this? Okay, here is the liquid flowing around. It's going through the aqua tuner because the sensor is detecting that the water going through is 30 degrees or hotter. Well, it's detecting that it's above one degree, but just say we change that to 30 degrees, so it's it's hit its relevant temperature. The aqua tuner shuts off, but the liquid keeps going by and rotating around. This way we ensure constant rotation of the liquid. None of it stops anywhere where it could potentially boil. You know, if you stop these, sometimes the liquid will stay there and it's in a steam room, so it overheats and it eventually cracks the pipe if there's long periods of dormancy. This just means if there's a period of dormancy, there'll be no problems. Now, put that back down to one. The reason we use polluted water is it has a lower freezing point than regular water. I believe it's minus 20 if memory serves. Though memory might not be serving me. Eh. No, I just deconstruct that. Whole system should be set up. This area up here will get quite chilly. Uh, I might want to insulate it in a bit better. But I don't care about that right now. I want to queue up lots and lots of things. Note to self, don't make lead wires that touch a thermo aqua tuner out of lead. It turns out they can melt. Oops, uh, maybe some minor modifications here and use some slightly tougher conductive wire. We're going to go to iron. Uh, does that actually replace those? No, I'm going to have to do a little bit of changes here. Get rid of uh, those ones there. They're going to be in contact with a, a, little, bit of, a little bit of intense heat. Also throw in a diamond temperature shift plate here and another one down here to help dissipate the heat out of there quicker. I don't want that thing overheating. Just a few minor modifications. I'm also throwing in a rock crusher in here so any heat generated by that can get dumped into the steam turbine. I'll put in a... well I'm going to need to use it to grind up an awful lot of lime. I will put in a couple of those to go with it. This... Uh, I wouldn't say this is my smartest idea, but it's a nice way to get rid of all the heat. I can throw any heat I want in here, it doesn't care. And if I make uh, a hot room for my power room as well, I might be even able to join the two. Uh, if you have, say, natural gas na natural gas power, we could let them run hot and have the steam from that get dumped into the steam turbines. They'll need to do some flow control. Th there'd be things you'd need to do to make it work right, but it's, it's doable. Anyway, I'll skip this forward a bit while I just replace some of these wires with something a little bit more robust. That is the sound of industry. I love it. Um, this is all up and running now. They're running pretty well. The steam turbines are injecting power, some power back into the system. I've queued up 40 steel. Well, a bunch of it's already been done. 40 iron ore, uh, 40 aluminum, 40 gold amalgam. Uh, ceramic forever, ceramic forever, ceramic forever. The whole thing eats it like a champ. It doesn't care. Uh, Temperature-wise... Yes, I can say with confidence, this is a hot industrial brick. <laughs> uh, okay, I have to come up with a better name for that. I'll come up with a better name. A, a hot industrial brick. I'm terrible at naming, but I'll, I'll come up with something better before the end of the video. Uh, what, I, what I still have to do here, though, is fit in a plastic press. Now, if I just deconstruct, say, this here. It's buildings only. If I deconstruct that, I might be able to squeeze in a plastic press here. It just needs to be made out of steel. I should have enough steel produced. Yeah, I've got a, a ton of steel already made. Literally a ton. Uh, refinement. Now, this is the sneaky bit. The sneaky breaky bit. I put that right there. And you got to think, plastic melts at 156. 156, 158, somewhere around there. 150, let's say. 
So I have to keep the temperature at the output below 150, which is why all of this uh, water output from the steam turbines that comes out at 95C is all being dropped down right here. So this should constantly get, be getting doused in 95C water. So, so long as I keep my polymer press here, I can run it indefinitely. It should never overheat. And the waste product of it, which is steam, just gets dumped into a room full of steam that doesn't care. Yeah, yeah. Okay, not a smart idea, this whole thing. But it still looks cool when it runs. Now I have to do 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 1.8 tons of steel just so I can replace all these batteries. Like I said, this is not the most efficient design. I also need to hunt down... Well, since this is sorted, food... Well... Okay, next up I'll do food, and I'll get rid of the... I'll get all my my hatches sorted. I want to get my hatches done uh, automated meat ranching so I can go to barbecue instead of omelettes. So that will be next on the agenda. But after that, it's time to dismantle the map. I want to refine the world. Everything needs to go. Everything. That whole biome, gone. And that, don't care. This biome here can all go. There's no real metals in there, don't care. That's got to go. Yeah, that's that's all got to go, that's all got to go. Yeah, pretty much everything has got to go. Everything that isn't a salt biome has got to go. And I'll probably take the salt biomes because they should go as well anyway. And all of that will get dumped in here. This is much more compact than my previous version, though mm, not nearly as pretty. The decor overlay here is going to tell a horrifying tale of mistreatment. Ooh, minus 214, minus 300. Yeah, that's, that's not going to be pleasant to work. That's not going to be a good work environment. I should uh, maybe organize some sort of... Decor? No, I should do decor bombing in my main base. Later, later, later. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to queue up a few more things here before we get into uh, doing some automated barbecue. As a little side project, now that I had enough ceramic, I replaced the top layer here with ceramic tiles. Just because the heat from in here was... Th this was the biggest heat loss. Everything else I can either vacuum seal or double insulate. Or vacuum seal and double insulate, just to make sure no heat escapes. This should keep all of that heat contained and result in a far less heat loss. It does result in a bit of a mess that I have to mop up, but yeah, if, if you're not m mopping up after your dupes and yourself every so often, you're probably doing it wrong. And yeah, everything, yep. Yeah. That should take care of that for now. I've even replaced all the batteries down here with steel. So this can now join in the fold. I think it's time we, we, we brought it in right about now. I'm going to include some temperature shift plates first, though. Uh, you don't want to... If I was to, say, bring this straight in right now, uh, without taking, say, a few precautions, what might happen is all the steam might migrate down to the bottom, turn back into water, because the it's not very hot down here, and then I end up with all the water at the bottom, and the whole place would become a vacuum again, at which point things would get nasty. When you want to bring your battery box in, you need to be very careful. So what we're going to do here is just bring in one tile at a time, and not only that, I'm going to run some temperature shift plates down here first, just to make sure we've got some good temperature transfer going on. Uh, yeah, diamond. Yeah, we'll do that. That should help me transfer the heat down. And I'll replace that with something more conductive to help the heat spread down here a little bit better. Maybe some diamond might work. And with a little bit of sneaky heat transfer. Uh, temperature shift plates will transfer heat between two items. So uh, these two window tiles will transfer heat. But if you say put uh, six of these in a row, and they're not in atmosphere, they won't transfer heat between each other. So if you want to transfer heat through a vacuum or something where there's no transfer medium, temperature shift plate, diamond window tile, temperature shift plate, diamond window tile, and just daisy chain them along. It'll transfer heat okay. This allows me to get this whole place warmed up, ready for the, the, the move over to joining the rest of the, the little industrial box. Uh, wait, no, I'd come up with a name for this. What was it? Ah, yes, industrial sauna. Industrial sauna. I'll probably have that in the thumbnail or the description, so you, you've known it all along, but yes, I am going to call this the industrial sauna. Is it is it as swanky as the name is my industrial brick? I, I think it's better. I think I did well on that one. Now, uh, I'll just fast forward this a bit while I... Oh, actually, you know what? We will just place in these tiles now. What are those airflow tiles made out of copper? Good, I don't want to waste any aluminum. And then we just replace all of these. Boom. And it is now joined in the fray. Everything in here is well toasty. <laughs> oh, I should see... Oh, whoa, I should see all these in the... The chill is leaking at the top. Uh, actually... You know what? I think I might just leave it. A little bit of chill escaping is not the worst thing in the world. It won't get too far. It's pretty warm out there. And I don't mind wasting a bit of power. I've got plenty of coal. Or I should have. What am I consuming below looking at? 250 tons of coal. 
we're fine. Oh, new printables. Yeah, I don't want any of these. I'll just take the copper. Um, yeah, so then, now that this is part of the, the family, we can get rid of you. Now that this is part of it, the whole the heat from these batteries is now contained. I never have to worry about cooling them. In fact, I could extend this on another floor and put in another row. I might even squeeze these up at, at teach, and I might be able to stick in a second row of batteries if I really wanted to. Or maybe put in a row of power transformers so I could turn this also into a plug socket. Power transformers will also, their heat will be absorbed. It'll be steel expensive, but I should be able to make steel as necessary now. And we, wow, we made four tons of steel already. You know, uh, I better do some more math on what I'm actually going to produce. I don't think I have enough uh, iron left around, though. I've only got, yeah, I need a lot more iron ore. I need to find a caustic biome and rip it apart. Nope, nope, nope. Food first, then rip apart caustic biome. Uh, I've got about 25 minutes of footage, so I thought I'd just cover a couple of things at the end here because I'm not going to get food done. There's no safety features built into this. This is, there's no sneaky automation to turn things on and off, no complicated anything. This is sheer brute force and simplicity. Heat gets generated in here, gets destroyed by the steam turbines. There are no safety features, no overseers, no unions. This is literally the output of this is coming straight out into radiant pipes and just dumping its heat directly into the room that the duplicates are standing in. So it works, as far as I can tell. I haven't stress tested this though for a few hundred cycles, so I would not heartily recommend unless you're willing to take a chance and like to roll some dice. I added in a couple of lights, uh, a few lights made of steel, of course. Uh, duplicates get a bonus when they're standing in lighting now to their machine operation skills, so they'll operate this faster. Uh, it seems to work in toilets as well. I'm going to have to put lights in the toilets. They'll they'll use the bathroom 15% faster. They'll operate machines 15% faster. Anything that has uh, uh, this sort of thing down here, as you can see, they're flying through that quite quickly. So the lights, well, we'll see how they help out. I should probably rejig this a bit and maybe move the rock crusher closer to the exit so that duplicate is not exposed to such horrendous decor. A couple of statues are not really helping at all. Uh, the only automation here is this. This is the only automation in the whole thing. Oh, and well, of course, turning on and off the power. So this is it. It just controls the, the cooling loop over here that provides the chill for the entire steam turbine section. I, would, I, I could heartily not recommend this design. It is absolutely ludicrous. Running everything this hot and having your duplicates coming in suits. Ah, total insanity. Uh, having to put in a vacuum lock here is the only way you can keep the heat from getting out. Uh, if you just have the, this liquid lock exposed to the rest of the base, it, it will dump 140, 150 degree heat into the surrounding area. So you need a double vacuum lock. You could make a one like this, but I'm not sure how well it would hold. I, I prefer using a good robust one. And it should never get hot enough to turn into petroleum. So we should be safe on that front. Uh, plastic wise, installed, working fine. The only weird thing is, well, I've only got a bit of a, a bit of petroleum that I, I had left over from there. The only weird thing is I had to insulate the petroleum pipe on the way in, otherwise it would suck heat out of the room. The only design I've made where you're worried about putting in stuff that's not hot enough. Uh, perfection. Uh, the little droplets of water coming down here from the uh, the steam turbines seems to be working quite well. The plastic is staying at a nice balmy temperature, and it, it really does have thermal terrible thermal conductivity so its heat won't go up that much anyway it should be perfectly fine to run it here i've never seen the temperature get in here get even close to 159 in this area it does get a little bit toasty over here near the steel production but eh, what can you do anyway i'm gonna i'm gonna cut this out here i definitely do not have time to do uh, meat hatching all in all had a hell of a lot of fun making this I'm, I'm interested to see how far i can expand it especially when we get into a hot power brick but but for the time being i'll cut it out here i i hope you had as much fun as i did and uh good luck <laughs>